Hello and welcome to the special edition of We the People coming to you from Mumbai. How many of you knew that every hour there are 15 suicides in this country? In fact, more than 370 every day and over a lakh 35,000 this past year. That is how common suicides are and yet they are discussed and debated so little. There still continues to be an unnecessary stigma around them and a really acute absence of understanding. Now there is a new bill in parliament that proposes that suicide needs to be decriminalized. On the program today, we'll also be asking whether modern life has made urbanites especially vulnerable, whether it is the film industry that has seen a spate of suicides from Gurudat in the past to most recently Jia Khan is the industry especially vulnerable. Is suicide something that is a reality we do not want to confront because we do not understand it? And what of abetment to suicide? A justified provision in the law or a much misused one? Let me start with you, Mahesh Bhatt. You have argued that what happened with Jia Khan recently has actually pulled the film industry out of what you describe to be a coma-like situation, a kind, of, a kind of denial. You have seen many things in your years in the industry. You've seen your own relationship with Parveen Babi. You've seen what happened to Gurudat. You've seen what happened to Jia. Is the industry in particular in denial? I think it would be uh, absurd to say that the film industry in particular is vulnerable to this suicide epidemic which is threatening to devour the world. Yet you call it an epidemic. I, it is an epidemic because the, it's, it's absurd that while, while we keep on uh, improving on your surveillance uh, uh, systems, the danger that you really have is from yourself. The, the, the chances of you eliminating yourself are perhaps more mm -hmm. than you being eliminated by somebody else. But this is the tragedy, the, the bedrock of the, on which this stands is society itself. Society is a sick society. You see, there are people who do not want to fit in. It's, to use the phraseology of boxing, I want to throw in the towel. I don't want to fit into this ugly, horrendous value system which you pretend to uh, actually mm. practice, but behind the closed door violate. There's a young boy, a young girl who says, I do not want to be a cog in the, uh, of this machine, this apparatus. And just when they want to give up, you force them, you send them to psychiatrists want them to fit them in, and then it gets too much, they say, stop the world, we want to get off. And, when, and if they're unlucky to get caught, you do not let go of them, you put them in the, in, in the prison. So this is an absurd situation. I think all legal uh, structures are built on the religious ideology of man, which said that life is sacred. If life is sacred, why do you condone war? Mankind has opted for suicide. It's okay to but, die but for a cause, for a flag, for a religion, for some, some issue. But an individual says, I cannot fit into your ugly value system and I want an out. What do you do? So what I'm hearing from you is stop the judgment of those who kill themselves. I'm saying those who say life is sacred are bluffers. The new bill says that anyone who attempts suicide should be treated as mentally ill. Would you agree with that? Doctors have definitions of health. Health itself is a definition. So a team of doctors will get together and say, this particular person is clinically uh, not healthy. Why? Because he cannot fit into the rhythm of what is called the majority. Mm. And that's why you say, now pull him out and make him fit in. That's where they come, they counsel you. If they, nothing works, they give you electric convulsive therapy and uh, further, further brutality against them. I just don't want to fit into your system. I want an out. Can't people who do not want to fit into your system have the right to exist? Okay, hang on. I have to ask you. Aren't you sounding like you're encouraging suicides? Look, I had the privilege to meet the most extraordinary man, the most subversive man called Yuji Krishnamurti, who opted to get off the merry-go-round. You wrote a book on 2000. Him. Yes, I wrote a book called A Taste of Life, 2007. He did not accelerate his death because he was not suffering from any unimaginable pain which he wanted to escape from, nor was he hurtling towards the doors of heaven. He said, it, it was like, a, I described that even like a gorgeous sunset. I sat down there and watched the sunset. That is the way he said, I'm like a dog, like a pig, like a rat, like a leaf fall. He just went. And I, was, I just sat down there. He said, only thing I want from you as a friend is seeing that these guys don't come in and put me on those life support systems to keep their industries going. 
to make a money out of my tragedy. I want to go. This is the way. I'm not doing anything to fast forward it. But it was not suicide. Now, people will say, oh, the, there are references to this in a particular faith where people yeah. do it. They, 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 those guys do it to go to a sacred space, to, to, to be next to the Almighty. This gentleman debunked the idea, the narrative of the gods, said, this is my life. It has had its run. I gracefully want to go unsung, unwept, unremembered. Now, that's a very, very passionate and some would say contentious account. But Pooja Bedi, I want to get you in first. And I'll tell you why. Because what I heard from Mahesh is, if somebody wants to get off the treadmill, that's their right. Who are we to judge them? Let you are saying that, Let right? me qualify I'm, this. I'm yeah, not saying I'm, that. I'm saying, I'm saying, I say when somebody doesn't want to fit in, you don't let that person be. You say... You are a criminal, an aberration. Local, yeah. You are a misfit. Yeah. You are not an achiever. But Pooja has said in writing that suicides are selfish and cowardly. So she's actually used some of the words that you're actually questioning. And, 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 and you have said this, you have said this despite the fact that you have a personal tragedy. Your brother, your brother committed suicide. Yes. You know, Barkha, there are various perspectives to suicide. Mahesh Ankal has discussed one of them, which is your right to get off the planet because you consider yourself a misfit or whatever. But I think a majority of suicides happen as a cry for help. Because in a majority of cases, people are so starved, so desperate, so, so, so trodden on. They have no way for survival. For example, the farmer suicides that take place. Not because they want to commit suicide, because they feel they have no option. It's their last final cry for help. So it's despair. Number one, it's incredible despair. That's number one. That's one aspect of it. Second aspect would be, for example, a person that is genuinely mentally ill. Not somebody who's caught by a psychiatrist, put on a chair and put through various electric shocks. But somebody who genuinely has a mental disorder. You're your brother, brother was schizophrenic. Had. My brother yeah. was diagnosed as schizophrenic. Now, in India, mental illness is not very well looked at. For example, there's a lot of stigma associated with it. You have a heart condition, people will go to doctors. You have cancer, people go to doctors. You have a mental illness, people hide it in their families because they say, oh my God, pagal hai. They don't consider it a disease that can be treated. My brother was in America. He was being treated by the best, supposedly. Um, he had long talks with my father about his condition because the medication was so strong. He was a brilliant whiz kid. He graduated from Carnegie Mellon with honors on the dean's list. He told my father, he said, Papa, I sit in front of the computer. I'm a fantastic programmer. I can't think. He's saying, I love my food. The medication is so strong. I can't taste my food. What use is quantity of life if I can't have quality? And Papa said, Siddharth, stay with the program. You will get better. When he met a psychiatrist a couple of weeks later for his therapy and asked, when will I get better? The doctor told him, Siddharth, you will never be 100% of what you ever were. My brother took a very conscious decision, saying, this is not how I see the rest of my life. And he wrote a very lovely suicide note for me, my daughter, my mother, left a check for uh, funeral expenses, and decided to get off the planet, because that's not how he envisioned the rest of his life. So, he was just 25. So, so I want to ask you, because you, despite this said, you feel many suicides are just selfish yes, and cowardly. Absolutely. Which what, are those, what, according to you? What Siddharth did was not selfish. What Siddharth did was a choice he made to not inflict his misery onto other people in credit because if he's not able to earn and work and be a be a, a, a active citizen on this planet he chose not to be a burden on other people but people when i see people that have all the benefits of what this wonderful world can offer uh, in an emotional fit for love reasons or for whatever negating say 25 years of what has been invested into them by their parents and saying that because one love affair went wrong and you choose to get off the planet because you can't bear the pain of that i think that is so selfish and i think that is so cowardly that you cannot get up and say you know what one person in 1.2 billion in this country and wasn't the right guy for me well too bad for him he lost out on me so jilted you know? relationships when they end in, in suicide so you have a you have a problem and, with and, that. and i also i also have a problem with with for example um, uh, suicides by students under exam pressure because if it's why do you have a problem with that I because have we have parents yes, here whose, yes, whose daughter I, went through that yes, and, I, and I, we I don't you, know what that pressure I, is I, like. I tell you why because every student goes through the same pressure every student goes through the same schooling system every student out there tries their best and I have a problem with the fact that somehow somewhere they were not taught coping skills mm. it's about coping with the stress Okay, Mahesh Podar sitting next to me, is, his daughter was 15 when she killed herself. I'm and we're so going to we're going to we're going to hear because you brought this up. Yes. I want to hear from Mr. Podar. But I'm first just going to go to KTS Tulsi. This business of the suicide note. Mahesh Bhatt says it's about me, the individual, not fitting in. 
But sometimes the suicide note is not about me, the individual not fitting in. It's about you did this to me, so I killed myself. Now you've gone Parakha, through you're this. You're not getting me right. I'm saying it is the your I value system. You right. Your value system is making that individual feel that the way he or she is, it's not good enough. I understand. So there's a feeling of inadequacy. I don't match up. But when a Jia Khan family says, so and so was responsible for my daughter's suicide. What do you say? Because that's the question I was going to take to Mr. Dulsi. Well, I think for in that area, I would agree with what Dr. Mashiswala says that there are the, the whole chemistry of the brain goes haywire, mm. which can be corrected through <coughs> ingestion of particular drugs or through certain therapies. But my question, one sentence. I just want to say one thing: suicide is suicide, homicide is homicide. Nobody can make you do anything without your consent. It's as simple as that. The choice is yours. It's your life. But I'm going to ask: Is it that simple? When Pooja Bedi KTS Tulsi says that suicide is suicide, homicide is homicide. When you represent, for example, Gopal Kanda, who's accused of exploiting a woman who was his colleague, and that woman is driven to to, to, to suicide, and she basically makes that allegation in her suicide note and there is a suggestion of exploitation not just the not just the mere ending of a relationship is it that black and white to say suicide is suicide it's not homicide you see my position is this that you have a right to live and right to live includes right to die by criminalizing suicide what are we saying to the people we are unable we, we don't care about their, their their dire straits that they are in but if they succeed in suicide, that's the end of the story normally, unless they have written a revengeful note. But what about abetment? What about abetment? No, Because I, even if you decriminalize suicide, you will not be decriminalizing abetment. No, no, abetment will automatically go. If suicide is not a crime, abetment is a, 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 a abetment to a crime that you have, you are intentionally aiding the commission of a crime. But your client in this case, Mr. Tulsi, was accused of exploiting a young woman. Somebody is exploited only when somebody is willing to be exploited. There's no force involved in this. So you're blaming the victim? No, no. Both are to be blamed. Why? Uh, suicide, many a times the suicide notes actually are an act of revenge. The bride uh, wants to go. She had a problem with her husband. She has a problem with the mother-in-law and she thinks that through this law, she can teach them a lesson. In fact, having suicide on the criminal statute is encouraging suicide. What if it's not an adulterated relationship? What if it's sexual abuse? What if it's rape? I'm not saying that women who are raped or sexually abused should ever feel that their lives are over. If, but if society makes them feel If that. suicide is not on the statute, the woman will fight. We'll teach him a lesson. You know, what are you telling them by having suicide on the, on the statute? You're telling them, if you are going to commit attempt suicide, better succeed. I want to ask one fundamental question. Yes. You say life is sacred. What screams out and tells you every now and then? Is life sacred? You do, do you treat life with sanctity? You kill people in war, you maim people, you brutalize them, and then like a neurotic schizophrenic, you see in the next breath you say, life is sacred. These priests, they bless war, and then they make a woman who aborts a child feel like a criminal. So that's, that's <coughs> something wrong. It's a sick society. So an individual is saying, I do not want to fit into the sick society. So they get the doctor. And the doctor is the Gestapo. He says, I will make you the person fit you in. So he tells you, gives you drugs to do what? To fit in, to run what from What would you do? If you knew somebody, Mahesh, your daughter, your lover, your wife, your sister, who wanted to kill themselves, I, would I you say them. just go I, and kill I yourself? Have done, I love did. Them. I have. No, you would do what? No. Love I, them. I have. Love I, them. No, but no, what yes. would you tell them if they Make felt that? Make their life worth living. I, I said to you, you could read that book on a taste of life. This was a gentleman who had lived his life. He said, my body is saying goodbye. No, but what I he, want he's to go. asking is, what will you do? Oh, I did what it. will you it's do with your relative, with your he son? He is your I son. I'm what will you do? You don't even know. This is my relative. He's, this was the most defining relationship of my life. Why did he, while I'm all for decriminalizing suicide, why am I getting the impression that you're saying, if somebody wants to give up on life, you can't stop them, let them? I'm talking about a concrete person, not an abstract person. Yes. I'm talking about a person who is the breath of my existence, Mr. Yuji Krishnamurti. He said, my life is coming to an end. I do not want to be plugged into this life support system. Neither, neither do I want to escape a pain. I want to go into that corner like a dog goes and die. Can you make it possible? I made it possible for him. 
Doctor, I did, Dr. Not, Dr. Doctor I did not help him to commit suicide. Dr. He said, I do not want to extend life. UJ Krishnamurti is not his close, close relative. What will he do if it is his daughter? What is why, are, cries, why are you disturbed by what Mahesh has said? Because, because he, he, he doesn't like this narrative. Because, because he talks your entire narrative. UG, UG Krishnamurti is not his relative. <laughs> if his daughter, brother, sister has depression, he she, will go to the psychiatrist. Already, which is why he, he's working with Machiswala any, yeah. with a booklet and he's put the names of psychiatrists down to help the film actors. Talking in so a show. So what's wrong with helping the film actors? Ask him.